Okay, so today we'll be studying about the orthodontic appliances and in that we'll be studying about the removable orthodontic appliances. Removable, as the name suggests, is that they can be removed by the patient. Removed by the patient. And uh, so orthodontic appliances, they can be defined as devices which create and or transmit the forces to individual teeth or group of teeth and or maxillofacial skeletal units so as to bring about changes within the bone with or without tooth movement which will help to achieve the treatment goals of functional efficiency, structural balance and aesthetic harmony. So whenever we are doing an orthodontic treatment, we have three goals and these goals is that we need functional efficiency, structural balance and aesthetic harmony. So the orthodontic appliances, they are the devices which create or transmit the forces to individual teeth or a group of teeth and or the maxillofacial skeletal units. So as to bring about changes, where they will bring the changes, they will bring changes within the bone with or without tooth movement. They will either do tooth movement or they just would bring about the changes in the bone. So that our treatment goals, these three treatment goals, that is the functional efficiency, structural balance and aesthetic harmony are met. So based upon the fact whether the patient can remove the appliance or not, uh, they can be classified as removable, semi-fixed and fixed. So removable, as the name suggests, is that they can be removed by the patient. The example is the Holly's retainer. Here is a picture of Holly's retainer. And the second is that uh, they could be either semi-fixed also or fixed also. So semi-fix is the one, so the parts of some parts of which can be removed by the patient. Example is the lip bumper, and the third is the fixed. Example is pre-adjusted edge-wise appliance. These are the appliances that the patient cannot remove by himself. The second classification is mechanical and functional. So mechanical has the active component which will bring about the changes. Uh, active component mis means that they would apply forces. We studied in the definition either they'll create the forces, either they'll create the forces or transmit the forces. And the functional, what they do is that they engage both the arches, means um, the maxillary and the mandible, and they hold the mandible away from the resting position so that they can bring about the changes in the uh, discrepancies in the arch. Now, what about, for example, is uh, FR2 appliance of Frankel and what about the forces? So, they transmit the force of circumoral musculature means the surrounding uh, muscles uh, to the teeth and the alveolar bone. So, there are certain ideal requirements of orthodontic appliances and these are, uh, these can be categorized as the biological requirements, the mechanical requirements and the aesthetic requirements. So, under the biological requirement is that they should bring about the desired tooth movement. So, our treatment cannot be uh, a success, cannot be a success until we um, bring about the desired tooth movement. And the second is that they should move only those teeth that are designed to be moved. And the material used for fabrication should be biocompatible, means they should not react with the tissues and should not harm them. And they should not have detrimental impact on the tooth. They should not hamper normal growth, should not inhibit normal functions and should not disintegrate in the oral environment. So the mechanical requirements is that they should deliver continuous control forces. So why do we need continuous control forces? So if we get a, a large amount of force in short amount of time, either for example, if someone uh, you know tries to punch you on your face or on your teeth, uh, you can uh, what we'll do, you'll either harm it or you'll fracture it. So we need continuous control forces so that the we get time for bone remodeling and we get time for the tooth to move slowly from the position. So we cannot have the treatment uh, be done in a very short amount of time. So we need to have a continuous controlled forces. And they should be able to withstand routine masticatory forces as well, should not break. And it should be universally applicable means uh, anywhere the dentist in any part of the world can make it under the certain sets of rule. Uh, these rules means the way they are fabricated, they can make it and they can apply it to the patient and they should be easy to fabricate and activate, actually they should be coming here only and uh, they should not be bulky and uncomfortable. 
this bulky thing will be studying under the base plate uh, because that is the only component which is going to provide the bulk so they should not be bulky and uncomfortable now the aesthetic requirement is that they should be aesthetically acceptable means they should be as inconspicuous as possible as hidden as possible in the patient's mouth now the removable appliances they have certain advantages advantages so if something has an advantage it will also have certain disadvantages so we'll be studying about them now advantages is that the patient can continue with routine oral hygiene practices for example if the patient needs to brush his teeth he can just remove the appliance for a certain amount of time for a few minutes and can brush his teeth and put it back back again and the second one is that the tipping movement can be carried out successfully and it is less conspicuous less conspicuous kind of hidden should be simple to fabricate deliver and monitor less chew side time specialized labs less chew side time because you what you need is that you just need to take an impression of the patient impression and then you when you have the cast you can fabricate it on the cast itself so um, less chew side time this is an advantage and cheaper than fixed appliance so why cheaper because you just need the stainless steel wire you need a pliers and of course the technique which doesn't cost you anything and these two things will cost you of course uh, the advantage is that the patient cooperate disadvantage is that the patient cooperation is must for example if you're giving an appliance to a patient for example this is an appliance if you're giving an appliance to the patient and it does not wear it your treatment would fail so the patient cooperation is must and only certain type of movements are possible and multiple movements are difficult so it, they take more time to complete the treatment and chances of appliance loss and breakage is more so general principles of removable appliances how it works so they work by tipping a tooth around its cent uh, around its center resistance which is located between 30 to 40 degrees from the root apex they work by tipping a tooth tipping movement around its center of resistance which is located between 30 to 40 degree from the root apex now appliances have certain components components means kind of parts of an appliance so these are active retentive and the base plate so active components are the ones which will give the forces the retentive ones are the one which will provide the retention in the appliance because these forces will tend to displace they'll tend to displace the appliance so we need something that could provide the retention and the base plate is that component which will join all these the active the retentive plus it will distribute the forces distribute the forces so in active component you have the spring the bows the screws and elastics and uh, retentive you have the clasp in the base plate you have the base plate so these uh have been shown diagrammatically here the active component in the springs you have the finger spring the z spring the t spring the coffin spring the mattress spring the helical uh spring and the canine retractors in the bows you have the short bows the long the splayed the reverse the robust retractor the mills retractor the high label bow with the apron springs the fitted springs and screws these are also the active components which will provide the intermittent forces and the elastics they apply pressure and they'll cause the retraction of the anterior they are mainly used for the retraction of anterior and they have certain drawbacks also for example they can cause flattening of the arch and they can also cause gingival stripping and the advantage is that they provide better aesthetics now the clasp these are the component this is the part which will provide retention so there are certain types of clasp the c class the jackson class the adams class the schwartz the south end the triangular the ball end and the cross end so these names uh, whether whether it's a spring or the class these names have been given according to the shape or the person who discovered it so in the next video we'll be studying about these uh, components in detail the finger the z and all those things how they are activated how they are fabricated and what they are used for and we'll also study about the base plate what should be the thickness of the base plate and what should be the extent of the base plate so uh, thanks for watching i hope you like the video this is my first video under dr teeth academy um hope you hope to see you soon bye bye